They say the best place to start any story is at the beginning. Problem is, we're not there anymore. And if life has taught us anything, it's that you can't live life backwards. Hi, I'm Casey, and this is Dan. And this is our crew, Hudson, Otto, Ben, Rodney, and of course, little Tuna. She's the chicken of Join us as we sail the world on our yacht hindsight, leave the past behind, and live life forward. Welcome to Sailing Hindsight. to a tanker last night so I'll have to ask Dan about that. They were doing some tanker slalom in the wee hours but now we get to just sit back and enjoy this beautiful sunrise. 7 a.m. and I am starting the second hour of watch. I've been listening to a little bit of my audiobook and just keep a watch out for prayers. Uh, Ben's wig not fishing lines and Ronnie's Ruby's book. Dan and the kids are still asleep. So there you go. Hour two. Ben has caught a monster or something. We're pretty sure it's a giant weed fish. Oh yeah, look at it come. Look at it skimming across the tops of the water. The elusive weed fish has been caught at last. The brave hunter is tired out with the struggle with the large species. This shall provide dinner for the entire group. There we go, thank you. <laughs> Morning shifts are usually pretty quiet. Everyone's getting rest from being up on shift the night before, and it just seems to tend to be the most peaceful part of the day.
the tail. <laughs> What's the fresh catch? My, my, my! Get him in the boat first. We lost him right up to the boat. Hold on. Hold on. In that mahi, they're really like paying attention to the fine knife skills in the rolling. It's not good for me. I believe, but it's worth it because the fish is delicious. I believe. No, oh, excuse you. <laughs> All right, guys, see you at 10. Just doing a quick check of the deck, deck walk, looking for flying fish, looking for anything that looked weird or different. <laughs> but we're good, everything was good this morning. How's the hydraulic leak on the bang look? It seems to be holding right now, but I have to pull it off and we'll get it. All right, it's 10 o'clock. I got zero sleep. I just listened to my audiobook for like an hour. Kids are hanging out, playing video games and stuff. Dan and Rodney are chilling. I think Dan's on duty right now. So I'm going to get the kids a snack. Here's all the lovely mahi meat, yeah. That we're gonna turn into some yummy dinner later tonight. And after I get the kids a snack, I'm gonna crawl back into our little nest here and try desperately to get some sleep because I am exhausted. It's been a long night and a long morning. <laughs> o'clock we got lunch for everybody i'm weird because i like sauerkraut on my hot dog and i also like relish but i don't like them together so i do a half and half how was your shift dan great tell everyone about the fun little project you discovered for today well it seems that the macerator on the front blackwater tank is uh not spinning so we can't evacuate the uh, contents. The contents. That's, nice so, that's the nicest way I've ever heard anyone refer to that, but okay. So we gotta take a look at that after lunch. Really fun black water, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Gotta have something awful to counteract the awesomeness of the early morning fish catch, you know, or else it wouldn't be a day on the boat. <laughs> on the, the poop situation. Well, 
tango's about to blow its lid. Good thing we said something. You started by saying it. Thank gosh you did. I kept meaning. Oh, okay. That would have been bad. It's not a fun conversation to have, but Better to have it. It's my fault. He mentioned something was funky with the head last night and I didn't think to tell you. So it's under heavy pressure. So yeah, I open, saw that when you opened the hose. So we open up the top one so we can release the pressure slowly from an easy place to get to. We're going to bring it down below the elbow of the macerator so now that we can take the macerator out. So is the whole tank empty now? No. Oh, okay. I haven't closed. We don't want to have to do it by hand if we don't have to. No, no, no. Why is it that the smell of it makes me have to go poop? <laughs> because it's Like, all of a sudden, I'm like, ooh, I need to go poop. I don't know. It's weird. The entire boat smells like poop. Poop, 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 that hatch is open, which we don't normally do while we're underway, but there is literally no wind, no wind, and it's flat, it's super flat. And the swell's coming from directly behind us, so there's pretty low risk of us getting any water in the boat, so we are gonna open the hatches, try to air it out a little bit, and then we will shout for breeze the crap out of the inside of the boat. That okay. little blade cuts something up and there's definitely something trapped in there. So basically like chops up the poop and the paper that's not supposed to go in there and stuff like that. Yep. Like that. Yeah. Macerate from your root, masticate. Sort of like a uh, garbage disposal. boys are just going to finish cleaning out the macerator and then get it reinstalled and something we usually don't do on long passages they're going to take a really long hot shower yeah you got to be careful with a marine head system all it takes is one little teeny tiny thing and we almost had a catastrophe their tank was about probably one or two more flushes away from exploding then it was your ponytail holder wasn't it sorry guys <laughs> I don't think I've lost any. It looks like a British one to me. That's, yeah. How could you tell? Because <laughs> it went, oi, ginger! It's it it actually... sturdy and well built. Hey, it's almost 2 o'clock. I'm about to go back on shift. But before I do, I am reorganizing all of our courtesy flags. I had to dig them all out and find the Bahamas one and the Q flag. So I've decided to reorganize them all alphabetically get them all put away because other than the Bahamas and the US we're not really gonna need any other courtesy flags for a long time so I'm gonna get them all cleaned up tucked away and ready for next winter yeah wait what happened you can put it back in oh well, we can't we don't know what we're what the problem is there what do you mean what is the problem I don't know this part attached to the tank what's the problem oh the uh your outfield's got the wrong direction. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, what happened this time? So we put everything back on um, successfully, uh, and then we tried turning it on and it wasn't working, so we're going to try and replace the infrared in power. Oh, we have a spare, that's good. Yeah, which is good news. There's so, spare in there. yeah. Ew, more poops. Um, you know how when there's like video of food and you wish that smell of vision existed so you could smell the like you, we need to know we need to flat out like smell the yummy bacon cooking and stuff <laughs> this is where you really don't want smell of vision okay impeller has been replaced so did it work oh, yes. <laughs> I've never been more happy to hear an electric motor in my entire life <laughs> oh Otto's excited 
don't want to touch me also right now. I seriously don't. He's got poop on his hands. All right, it's 1500. I'm still on watch, and good news one, they got both the master and the impeller fixed, so the forehead is functioning again. Yeah, we seem to pump out the tanks, and even better, the wind's picking up, so we might actually get to start sailing again instead of motoring, which would be awesome. Sailing offshore is always an adventure. Some days are champagne sailings, and others end up being a whole lot more than we planned on. When you're surrounded by the deep blue of the vast ocean, you start to realize that it's just the boat and her crew out here all alone. Not often do you see other ships, there's no coast guard, and if something happens, no one's really coming to save you. When you set off into the unknown with your family, it can be mentally challenging. When all you see is ocean as far as you can see, even the best captains, maybe all the best captains, have a slight sense of trepidation. It's said that space is the final frontier, but the ocean, she was the first frontier. And men, women, and children around the globe go out to meet her every day. She's fast, beautiful, challenging, and most of all, she's our home. Next time on Sailing Hindsight, like join us for part line. three of our four-part passage like video, where this. we have a little mishap and yeah, try to sink the boat. Seawater can come back in. Hey look guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Just notifications on it and leave like button.